Hey everybody, welcome to game two between Do Life and Laser Snipe. Bottom left hand corner, we have Do Life. I gotta give this to Do Life. Do Life has found the good color for Terran and he is sticking with it. Maybe he'll ride that all the way to BSL victory. Fighting for the last position in the round of eight of Group D. Laser Snipe in the upper right corner as the blue Protoss. This is Shakuris Plateau. And I really wanna see Laser Snipe pull out a victory here. It feels like he does a lot of the, he just does a lot of the right things. But then you can see where it is difficult. And I almost feel like, how do I put this? I feel like Laser Snipe exemplifies Macro Protoss or a Protoss who will, is getting better and will get better in the long term, but where the struggles are at this particular MMR, where there's a lot of things Terran can do as far as, I know Artosis complains about all of the things that Protoss can do and how easy it is. But I feel like this is a good example where when you're trying to play properly, when you're trying to properly in quotes, when you're trying to play a macro oriented Protoss player that's going for a more passive initial style where you're trying to get the economic lead over the long term, you can just see where there are those moments where you really need to do a lot at once to really capitalize on those gains and push through and where Terran has a lot of ability in the in between space with the weapons upgrades, with things like that, with just honestly just straight build order wins and adjustments you can do as long as you execute it properly. Uh, to push through so i feel like terran have a lot of trouble beneath this level but i feel like this is the space where terran can really excel um unfortunately for terran on the opposite side of the corner i feel like this is where they have a lot of trouble versus zerg opponents at the same time because of all the because it's like the same thing i love starcraft that's what i'm going to say there's just so much that uh can happen here also wanted to give a shout out to aaron who has provided an immense amount of comments on youtube but one of the ones in particular recently where it's like like, ah, you're saying everything right. I don't know that I'm saying everything right. So I do want to, you guys to keep your minds open. And part of the reason I love StarCraft, at least these days at this level, and like why I like doing it at this level, is because it's starting to feel, this is where it feels like sport, you know? Where people, I know in NFL games, we're like, why don't they just throw the ball every round? I like that sort of discussion and counter discussion and people being able to explain their thoughts and whatnot. I really want to stick in that mentality in comparison to the stereotypical thing, which I think has been detrimental in the StarCraft community, which is I'm better than you. I'm a higher MMR. Therefore, what I say is absolutely 100% correct all the time, which I mean, to be fair, many times it is, but it kills a lot of the fun of it, right? So anyway, point being, this is a safe space to say whatever you want, even if it's wrong. As long as you're willing to hear things and hear people discuss like, nah, we should do this, we should do that. Comparatively to the NFL or soccer, it's like, why don't they kick the ball super fast when it gets in front of the goal? Or why don't they just all have a bunch of Messiers or whatever comparatively or the NFL? Like, why don't they run this? Why don't they run a zone scheme instead that would benefit? Uh, that's, I think, the essence and energy that I'm trying to convey and support in this. Let me get to the commentary itself. Do life. Scouting into laser snipe space in bottom left hand corner. He's moved a single SCV to gas going factory. So it looks like he's going to go for that single base into expansion or single factory into expansion thing with laser snipes pa passes, uh, passivity. I'm not sure why I had such trouble spitting that word out with his passivity. I'm wondering if he can just sneak a lot of stuff here. Uh, range is being upgraded. He's got that gateway down. Maybe able to sneak a second gateway out. The Dragoon trying to hunt that SCV down. It's going to sneak out. Oh, is he he's just going to camp there and might be might have boxed himself in. Dragoon is trying to get a cutoff route to find him. I don't know that he's going to find him. Three Marines blockading that front door. Did one of them get the kill? One got the kill. So while I was doing all my rants, one Marine was able to take uh, at least that additional probe scout out. Four Marines are being produced. We'll see if additional Marines are being produced for a potential timing attack. Oh, we are seeing potential timing attacks. So this is going to be five Marines. So fact, now the question is, is what essence of a timing attack are we going to see? Initial siege tank, Dragoon making its way to the front. And this is, yeah, where the Dragoon really needs to spot and see the Marines. This is one thing I have seen as far as like a problem in Laser Snipes style of play is right now. So he's grabbed another expansion before additional gateways. With just the one gate, it's going to be trouble to fight this off. But also, I love what Dulife's doing, kind of hiding the Marines here in the background. Also, critically, if you're going to go for kind of the smaller Dragoon count and whatnot, I almost feel like, okay, yeah, that SCV, you want to be able to kill that SCV, keep it from going up in your ramp, but you do need to, at a certain point, have units in your opponent's face so that you can kind of do that delay and have some reaction and, and deal with that. I don't know the solution to that, to be honest, altogether, especially in larger macro-oriented maps and wanting to deny the scout overall. Mine's being researched, so it's going to be, I believe, the two or three siege tank with Vulture support rush and i think it's ooh, that's a lot of marines with eight marines okay only ooh, and this is only to be what three dragoons thus far to defend this 
Two additional gateways plopping down. There is a robotics facility, so the timing might be there to try to defend this, but it's going to require a lot of delay. A lot of delay from laser snipe. The Dragoon has managed to go in and sneak that SCV. Now sees the attack coming from the front. Let's see if they press forward. At least this is what I was taught. This is, okay, your range is up. You want to go ahead and try to pick off these Marines, hold position, walk into them, pick off as much as you can before it's on your front door. Instead, laser snipe allowing this, these units to go ahead and press forward. That's going to, and especially if the Marines stay in front, they just peel shield so rapidly off these Dragoons. So rapidly off these Dragoons. And it looks like laser snipe is, yeah, backing off. Maybe he can get some better cavity to engage this, but really, I feel like, he, yeah, he needs to walk forward, engage here. Okay, now he's starting to position to engage at the low ramp. Do life, hesitating briefly, wanting the vulture to go ahead and take the lead and do some scouting. Some mines, wow, no mine getting planted right there. Nice snipe there by laser snipe, doing what his name, laser snipe in those mines. Another vulture trying to peel forward and actually is doing a pretty good job with this positioning. So ignore what I said, laser snipe doing everything he should to go ahead and box this off. Gonna wait on the observatory to follow this up to go ahead and clear mines on the high ground. Keep in mind these tanks don't have siege. Doing the free a couple free pot shots. I don't know, Did is there no Dragoon range? I'm wondering if there's no Dragoon range here as well. Siege tech has just finished for do life. So now you got seven Dragoons and do life gonna try to slow push this forward. Dragoons eating a lot of damage. Plus there's that high ground. Some mines being peeled out, the Marines a lot of Marines getting peeled up, but some Dragoons getting wiped out as well. Additional pylons being dropped in. Here's the thing. With this range, it doesn't quite reach the front. Observer moving forward sees that mine on that corner. And we'll be able to see when the tanks are sieging and unsieging. That might give some room for Laser Snipe to continue to press in and peel this. He's moving those Dragoons to the right. Loses another Dragoon. Also, this is a Dragoon getting picked off. A lot of Marines getting wiped out otherwise. And the Siege Tank now pounding away at those pylons on the front. That's also giving room for a potential Vulture to sneak by. So now Laser Snipe trying to swing around with these three Dragoons. He wants to go for potentially an end around attack. Potentially a pincer attack. So now engaging pincer attack. Dragoons from the north, Dragoons from the south. It looks like he is going to be able to clear this out. So nice defense by Laser Snipe. And I, I don't know if I want to call that like patience on Laser Snipe's paying off and like the, posi the positional play working out for him or do life just being a little bit too cautious with it instead of using those Marines to kind of barrel forward and get... An aggressive advantageous position however do life in the meantime has his natural expansion up this is again a situation though where laser snipe uh it looks like he's going to go ahead and walk and take his third but i feel like he can walk and take his third and get a little bit of position potentially and instead what this is allowing is do life to sneak these vultures out to potentially take out that that unit of the three o'clock base and he's going to wait on the observer to to check the front but he has a bunch of dragoons where he could really be assailing this front door and putting do life in a, like, Dulife's front door is completely open right now, is I guess what I'm trying to point out here. Granted, Laser Snipe doesn't have, just now has Vigil on it, and he's not really in position to do it, but he's potentially worried about that Vulture counterattack. But I feel like leaving, I don't know, a Dragoon in the background at your 3 o'clock base and plugging the gap, otherwise uh, pressing things forward would be more beneficial than just taking the third and nothing else, because I feel like this is giving opportunity for Dulife to kind of do whatever he wants. And what he's doing is he's grabbing additional factories. He's even... He's just now got that second siege tank out, really not clogging his front door, and that's allowing those vultures to kind of uh, push out and do what they want. Now, this is very reminiscent of game one. Very reminiscent of game one. We'll see if Laser Snipe is able to instead capitalize this time and turn around and turn this into a victory. He's definitely got the supply advantage lead. He's got Citadel of a Dune up. He's going for that Zealot leg speed. Critically, I want to point out in the background here, there is no armory. No armory up for do life that I see. So he is not going to have that same weapons upgrade. And he's going to try to accomplish basically the follow-up, I assume, on pure vulture harass. That's really what he's relying here in this mid-game. He's got uh, two machine shops to potentially keep producing tanks in the mid-game. And five factories overall producing a lot of vultures. He's already got decent mine coverage here at the 12 o'clock base. But basically what he wants to do is just flood out a bunch of vultures, keep laser snipe back in his base just on the pure potential threat of mines, etc. out in the forward, forward field. Laser Snipe doing a pretty good job macroing here. He's got those 47 probes. He's actually fallen behind do life and overall supply count, but keep in mind this is with pumping out a lot of vultures out of several factories. 
and not as well i was going to say not as many siege tank but you know decent siege tank count sneaky and the vultures trying to find what they can still no speed upgrade and actually kind of donating their lives laser snipe clearing out that 12 o'clock location it looks like he might actually decide to go ahead and take that 12 o'clock he's got that shuttle out and this is kind of a the that half position where I, f I find it's difficult for Protoss players at this level is, is I think Laser Snipe is kind of playing to counteract that level 2 weapons, level 1 armor upgrade, and kind of building in such a way to go ahead and deal with that. And instead, because Dulife's not doing that, there's other advantages he's finding. And now actually moving out with a large attack force of Siege Tanks and Vultures. Keep in mind, no weapons upgrade. Laser Snipe has a pretty decent army, but again, it is... Near his natural expansion, rather than out in midfield. Mine taking out a Dragoon. I think these just got miscued and out of position. Siege Shanks working on those Dragoons. More units coming from the north. These are zealot. These Zealots are speed upgraded, but that's allowing the Vultures to go ahead and sneak up and engage that 3 o'clock location. This single Siege Shanks is going to be engaged from the south, but do life just walking right in. Go ahead and back this up. Just walking right into that 3 o'clock, moving some vultures from behind. This group of units from Laser Snipe not engaging. That is a huge mistake. It looks like now they're starting to engage. Finally. The Zelt's having some trouble engaging on top of those siege tanks. And just because of positioning here, Laser Snipe having difficulty clearing this attack force out. It looks like he still might be able to clear this out. I don't know, though, actually. So the siege tanks still stand. Plenty of vultures. Another pylon trying to blockade. Is there going to be another round of units from Laser Snipe? To try to re-engage this. It does not look like it. Pylon just blockading the wall here. Laser Snipe just trying to rely on... Well, I guess this is one form of macro. To try to stay in this match. And there's just single vultures. Okay, scooped up in the shuttle. That might be able to get on top of that siege tank. At least clear that out. And that'll delay those vultures quite a bit of time. And maybe some follow-up dragoons now. After those mind drags. Might be able to clear things out. Those zealots getting wiped out. More siege tanks are on the way though. And do life hammering this 3 o'clock location. And is this still... It feels like there should be more gateway worth of production right here. Another gateway plopping down. But right now, it is... I think there might be more factories on Dulife's side than Laser Snipe's side. Let's go ahead and get a look. It's still five factories, but that's, what, five factories? Oh, no, it's five factories versus six gateways, so... I don't know. Anyway, 3 o'clock base. Dulife hammering in. Siege tanks in position. Laser Snipe just going in with just minimal units. And, ah, uh, unfortunately, I think he's going to end up... He's still trying to use this pylon wall to try to defend this, but just... He does have a Dark Templar. Maybe the Dark Templar can get something done. Good Zealot bombs on top of these siege tanks. The Vultures have managed to sneak in. Those probes are going to get wiped out. The Dark Templar right there. Very quickly taken out by that Compsat, and I think Dulife's done it again. I think he's going to be able to take that 3 o'clock base. He's got the 6 o'clock base blocked out by a Dragoon. He can easily send, honestly, a couple of Vultures to go ahead and wipe that Dragoon out. But it looks like he's going to be able to take this 3 o'clock before Laser Snipe's able to respond... And, yeah, and let's see if Dulife... The critical thing, though, is, is even if Dulife takes out this 3 o'clock base, he still needs to establish some economy of his own. But Laser Snipe's supply is just plummeting comparatively. And this is just a huge... Man, that's a lot of vultures out in front. Not a lot of siege tanks, but, man, a lot of vultures. Honestly, he can probably take out what's coming with just vultures alone. So that's wiped out. Let's see if he just even leaves these forces here. He could probably back off of what he's got. Another round of reinforcements moving in. So Dulife wants to just cap this here. Okay, he's backed off with this Vulture army. For the time being, the Zealot's going to go ahead and donate his life. But as we can see, here, come, here comes the Cavalry. Going to move in on these Dragoons. Again, box out that 3 o'clock location. He can just kind of sweep along this right-hand side. And Laser Snipe, because he's behind in supply... Oof, losing Dragoons here and there. And because it's just bulk amount of units, yeah, he's just going to be able to walk up again, get a cap, and seal. Psystorm being upgraded. There's an Arbiter right there. There's no recall, no safe assist, nothing to deal with this, however. 9 o'clock base being taken as almost an afterthought from Dew Life, but it does not matter. There's GG from Laser Snipe. Ah! Laser Snipe. I want to see you advance, my friend. Rooting for you. But knocked out of this round of BSL... I Check out a lot of Laser Snipe's awesome work with uh, CPL in their CPL Discord. Um, yeah, Season 7 is underway. Season 8 might be <laughs> underway by the time this goes live. But we move on to the round of 8. Congratulations, do-do life. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.